yeah, I knew about your company before That's I even awesome. met you. And then when I met you, I thought, I wonder if it's the same dude. That's funny. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's funny. And then when whenever showed me the bottle, I was like, oh. Oh, dude, she'll never let me live it down when I got a little butt hurt about the brothers giving me a hard time looking GQ or something. You know? <laughs> I'm like, dude, I don't know. Welcome to A Man's Perspective. Today, I have the privilege of talking to my brother, the founder and CEO of Paradise Herbs and Essentials. Scott, thank you so much for being here. My Want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, well, first, thanks for having me on. Thank you. Really You're appreciate welcome. it. And uh, boy, tell can I say, uh, I started Paradise 30 years ago, so oh, we're wow. celebrating our 30th anniversary this year. Uh -huh. Started in 1994, and at that time, uh, you know, I, I go back. So my whole story goes back, like yeah. way back when I was a kid. Um, I was about 10 years old, and I had really bad allergies, like massive allergies to where I would walk outside and my nose was running. I just was a miserable kid, but I was very active. And I grew up kind of with my mom. I was one of those kids that had to be like, here, take your peanut butter and your organic honey and your yeah, yeah, Hanson yeah. soda and all yeah. this. So I was going to school with this sack lunch mm -hmm. and it had all these health foods in it. And I was like jonesing for a Twinkie or something, wanted yeah, to yeah, trade yeah. my friends for the Twinkie. But, um, you know, early on, uh, my mom was very much into health foods. So I, I think I got my start from her. Mm -hmm. And I remember going to, uh, nothing worked, right? Sudafed and all of the allopathic medicines were not working. And so finally my mom's like, hey, I'm going to take you to this old beatnik dude named Walter Gallivan. He was in Costa Mesa. He was a chiropractor and he was very hip on, uh, you know, nat naturopathic medicine. So he was really one of the founders way back then. And he put me on raw thymus, which uh, helped to, modulate the immune system oh, and he right. put me on fenugreek and comfrey and some things and all, all the one main superfood he put me on was bee pollen and, bee and you pollen's remember phenomenal. all this when you were 10 oh yeah yeah i remember all of it wow <laughs> i can't remember yeah. what i did last week yeah yeah <laughs> so at the end of the day what happened was i i was a, i had environmental allergies to star jasmine so we had this huge star jasmine out in the front of the yard yeah and finally, we, that's a plant right I don't we know as a plant yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah so finally figured it out you know i was like oh man i was allergic to star jasmine but that's kind of how I got my start. And then at 14, I wanted a job. And so there was this health food place opening up called Mother's Market and Kitchen. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was up the street from my house. And I was like, dude, I'm going to go apply. And I was one of the first hires that they had. At wow. 16, I was running the vitamin department. So I was one of the youngest buyers in the natural foods industry at 16. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. And, I didn't know all this. Yeah. And then I went off and studied Chinese medicine. I got a job offer with Dr. Chen Li Wong and worked under her for about seven years. And um, then after that, had an opportunity to start my own company. And 30 years later, Paradise. Yeah. Wow. Believe it or not, our first product was kombucha. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And how did, how did you start? Like, did you just, just in your garage or? Like? Yeah, believe it or not, you know, I, I always had a fascination for Chinese medicine and I mm -hmm. started studying on my own and I had that opportunity to study with Dr. Chen Li Wong. I, I was working for her and, um, you know, she would, hey, Scott, go back and grind some herbs and then tell me how you feel, you know, and I'd mm -hmm. go back there like, oh, wow, I feel a little happy or whatever, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. And so with Chinese medicine, um, and I always tell people there's something called organoleptic. It's a fancy word for uh, you, you organoleptic test your fruit and your vegetables every time you go into the grocery store. I didn't even you, know. I don't even know that. I've never even heard that word. <laughs> yeah, it's a big fancy word for taste, smell, sight, right? Here, this is an organoleptic way of, of testing oh, okay, things. Okay. So yeah. I learned uh, early on how to organoleptically test and understand, um, you know, products, herbal products, herbal medicines, superfoods, things like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been a ride, man. It's been fun. It's been fun. We have 120 products now, Wow, over 120 products. We're, um, I'm formulating a sports and more product line. Yeah. yeah you so show the pictures, it's yeah. pretty sick. Yeah. yeah. A micronized cre creatine is our first product, which is, you know, but I'm developing much deeper formulations for men's health and, mm. and, and anybody's health in general. One thing I'm so grateful for to you, I've always taken a multivitamin and, and, different other stuff that i would read about but after meeting you and talking spending time talking to you I, you taught me so much about what different herbs do and i like i all the stuff that you recommend astrologus for stress and all these things like I, and i've noticed a big change in myself 
So I, I'm really grateful for for the information that you've given for me. So I thank you for that. No, always, so. yeah, no worries. <clears throat> All right. So what we we do on this podcast is I ask you questions. We questions regarding um, how to help uh, men, and so I print them out, I ask them, then we just discuss them. Yeah, okay, sounds cool. good. Yeah. All right. First question: Can you share any specific routines or habits? that have helped you maintain a healthy lifestyle amidst your busy schedule. Mm. That, to, that's kind of important because like if you don't, to me, if you don't organize yourself, you're, you're, you're never going to get a lot done. And a lot of people, I'm, I, I'm, just, I'm speaking out of personal experience. I used to feel really busy, but I would get nowhere in life. I would feel like I'm running, but I'm not achieving anything. So obviously the tremendous success you've had in your in your company your 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 decisions your actions are achieving a lot so what do you what do you do how do you how do you balance all that how do you make your decisions what like i feel like that every day <laughs> i feel like i'm running and not achieving anything every day no um you know i think i think my dad instilled good work ethics in me early on, you know. Um, oh, Mitch was a great man. Yeah, I love that guy, man. Yeah, I miss him. I miss him. Yeah. But but long story short, I think early on I just had that drive. You know, mm -hmm. now I can, uh, I have people that are, that are working for the company, obviously. I don't have to do everything. Yeah. But early on it was just a passion and a drive. I, I loved what I did. So I think that's really important, you know, to try to find something you really love to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it doesn't mean it was easy. I mean, there was there the, the business side of any business is yeah. difficult, yeah. but I really love Chinese medicine and Ayurvedic medicine, superfood technology. I mean, just natural supplements in general, right? Yeah. Sup the natural industry, the supplements, things like that. So I, I don't think it was very hard for me to be motivated to get up, go to work. I was working seven days a week for the first 10 years. You know, I would yeah, yeah. My, literally, most business yeah, yeah most I, would, entrepreneurs. I would do the invoicing. Then I'd go back in the warehouse and package the product. Then I would mm -hmm. deliver the product, you know? Yeah, and yeah. so, I, I mean, early on, it was a grind. Yeah. Um, today, I, I, I feel like I'm a little freer to be able to, have a balance and, yeah, yeah. and just be able to be like, yeah, man, I'm going to get up and go into work today. Or actually since COVID hit the technology, we all found out we could work out of our homes and yeah. get just as much done, which is interesting. But right now you said uh, the grind. Most people don't see, everyone always sees the end result. They see your success now. And every, almost every successful entrepreneur that I've ever read about they, they all talk about how for the first few years, 5, 10, up to 15 years of their business, it was seven days a week, 12, 16-hour, 18-hour days. No one ever remembers all that. No one ever thinks yeah. about all the, all the crazy hours, all the crazy effort. Everyone always just sees, oh, you're, they think that, and you hear the, the term privilege thrown around like it's, like it's yeah. something real, which is nonsense to me. There, there are very few people who ever are born with all this privilege that they try to talk about in the in the in the social media ethos no one ever thinks about that no one ever thinks about the grind the effort because it's hard it's hard to do to grind yeah yeah like even this podcast it's 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 i don't that's not something i do full time but it's so difficult finding people finding the getting the editing getting the lights right getting, it's so difficult so uh, I'm glad that you brought that up. I'm grateful for this, that you mentioned that. Well, I think it's about putting things, uh, you know, putting back in, pouring back in. Yeah. You know, it wasn't like I uh, went out and let's say, you know, the gross income in the beginning was a thousand dollars a month, whatever, yeah, yeah. right? Uh, I didn't take eight hundred for myself. I I just kept trying to build. You know, mm -hmm. I had another job at the time, and think thankfully it was in the same industry. I was a I was a broker rep. You yeah, know, yeah. while I was building Paradise and. Um, but like you said, you started with one camera yeah. Yeah. and you put back in, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so pouring back in is really important, especially when you believe in something so much, just yeah. like this podcast. I think it's fantastic what you're doing. Oh, thank and you. I think thank that, you. that more, more men ought to pay attention to what you're doing because oh, they can that. learn a lot and yeah. I'm learning a lot. I, 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 I can't wait to see the next one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, brother. <laughs> so yeah, I guess you're I love you. Thing, bro. You're doing a good thing. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, let's see what the next question is. What role does 
physical fitness play in your overall success as an entrepreneur? Oh boy. Yeah, because I remember All you. All right. Yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. <laughs> no, man. Um, I was always very, very active. Yeah, that's the thing um, I remember about you with martial arts, all this yeah. stuff you were always doing. And gosh, probably, you know, I'll share a little bit about my own health personally. Yeah. Uh, I have what you talk, what you call anatomical sleep apnea. Mm -hmm. So my, th I was born with like my throat's super small. Yeah, yeah, and even, yeah. you know, when I first met Minerva back 17, 18, 18 years ago, yeah, yeah. 19 almost, um, you know, I, I was like 165 mm -hmm. and I, I was still having issues. So, uh, you know, that was a struggle for me because I couldn't sleep. I was having yeah. problems, bro. You know, mm -hmm. and I would wake up and, and so the first year of our marriage should be like, dude, you, you choke in your sleep. You know, I go, no, oh. not me, <laughs> but <laughs> I was too strong for that. Always yeah. tired. I was always tired <laughs> and I always, uh, my joints hurt, you yeah. know, it was a lack of oxygen, you know, that I was getting yeah, to, yeah. I wasn't getting enough oxygen to the cells and everything. So, so sleep apnea, anatomical sleep apnea, it's a little bit different. And uh, believe it or not, I, I did have surgery and it didn't really work. So oh, I didn't know you had surgery. Really? Yeah, man. I had I had throat yeah. and nose surgery. Oh, yeah. Cause I had a deviated septum yeah, from, yeah. from a football injury I had mm -hmm. when I was a kid, you know. Yeah. So um, but yeah, so like I think sleep's super important. Oh, absolutely. You know, I, I I mean the truth of the matter is if we're not getting enough sleep, then our mental health is gonna be affected, our physical, obviously, yeah. even our emotional health. As yeah. guys, we don't talk about emotions, you know. Yeah, yeah. But the truth is, is we we're gonna be we're gonna be more irritable, yeah, a little bit testy, you know. So so they're doing more and more research on how important sleep is. Mm -hmm. And they say that, you know, in order for our testosterone to stay up as we get older, our testosterone starts to drop. Mm -hmm. And there's two different types of testosterone. There's binding testosterone, there's free testosterone. It's really important. Uh, if you can get both of those checked and, and yeah, see where your free just, testosterone yeah. is, that's the most important testosterone circulating through the system. Uh, but long story short, you know, eight to 10 hours minimum is what they're saying yeah. we need as men. Yeah, yeah, I saw a documentary that said like less than six, you age by 10 years every so many days or something. I'm like, Ooh. I'm like, dang. Yeah. And, and from like a personal note, there, there's weeks where at work we're short staffed and, I'll do like 80 hour work weeks and I'm just, I'm done at the end. I'm so done. I can't even think I can't focus. Sometimes I felt like I was hallucinating. Oh boy. Yeah. Like I, I know I'm home, but then I get this feeling like, like where am I at? You know, like, wow. Yeah. Wow. But then I'll go to sleep. I'll sleep 10 hours. I'll wake up and like, like life's glorious again. You know, like the yeah. birds are singing. So yeah, sleep is one of those things that we, we take for granted. Yeah, we all take for granted. And yeah, you mentioned sleep apnea. Yeah, you're the one that told me. Remember I told you, I was asking you how, man, I feel just so exhausted. You said, get get yourself tested. And I did. Oh, yeah. And you were you were right. Yeah. <laughs> you were I had one. another buddy that said the same thing to yeah. me. And he's, his, um, his he has two sons in MLB. They're yeah. both pitchers. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I said, you need to go get checked for sleep apnea. Yeah. Sure enough, he had sleep apnea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's crucial, man. I mean, not and it's not just sleep apnea. That guy's. I I mean, you know, snoring can affect. Yeah, yeah. You know, if, even if you don't have the the apneas, right? Yeah. Uh, also, if if we're not getting a deep enough sleep, there's other issues. There's, you know, another thing that my wife would always say is, I always ever since I was a kid, I'd rub my feet together to fall asleep. You know, yeah. and uh, that could actually affect your sleep. Believe it or not. Oh, yeah, know. because you know you're kind of moving around. And you're not yeah. really getting that deep oh, relaxation. Yeah, yeah. So they call that, you know, they call. I I don't know that I have that, but they do call that like that. The extreme version of that would be like restless leg syndrome, oh, okay, right? Yeah. And so it's kind of like if you're always running in your sleep, you're not rejuvenating. Yeah, sleep not, is all about rejuvenation. You're not really resting either. Yeah. Yeah, and if we're drinking, uh, you know, too many too many energy drinks during the day, and then our our brains can't wind down, right? Yeah. And so I think sleep's huge. And, and sleep actually goes back to traditional medicine. Um, it's called burning the candle at both ends, mm -hmm. right? So I'll, I'll give you a little like scenario of, of traditional Chinese medicine. There's a lot of different terminologies, but this, the one we're most familiar with is yin and yang, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, Everybody yeah. pretty much knows yeah, yin yeah, and yang. The white and the black. And all that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. think about like yang as, as, as the morning and the sun rising and it's energetic and, and yin is the night and it's still and calm and yin without 
it, it, yang without yin, you can't it, it, it can't survive. You yeah, can't yeah. just constantly have fire. Yeah, you'll burn out. Right. Yeah. That's why we call it burnout. Mm -hmm. So yin, it, it's like nourishing the body. Nourish is sleep is a big part of re, uh, yin and yeah. nourishing the body. And yang is kind of like when you wake up, mm -hmm. you're energetic, right? Uh, so the way I see it is sleep's huge. I always look at that because I, I struggled with that, yeah. you know, and, and especially being an entrepreneur, most people do not understand the level of stress that we're under. Yeah. I mean, you're it besides yeah. God, you're it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody's coming to me Yeah. and, or I, I, you know, and I don't like to share this too much, but I remember I, I just, Business is tough. I'll yeah. just put it that way. Their business is tough. It's a jungle. It really is a jungle. Take a toll. Yeah. So yeah, mental mental is is crucial. Mental, emotional, physical, all of that. Yeah, I I, I agree with you wholeheartedly because I've tried several businesses and I failed because I and, and I'm not I'm not I'm grateful for that failure because I learned a lot. But uh, the stress that I that's the biggest part. The lack of organization. The, my downfall. The lack of organization the lack of preparedness, not realizing how much weight is on the founder, how much pressure is on the builder. Man, it was overwhelming. And it was small. I did something tiny, you know. My businesses were small little one-on-one -on -one kind of things. And I even something that small kind of overwhelmed me because I wasn't prepared for it. Yeah. I remember a very successful uh, gentleman that I worked for, actually, be right before I started Paradise. And I called him a little while later into the company, maybe five, 10 years. Mm. He goes, yeah, man, the first million is really hard to make. Mm. And then you get caught between a million and five million. That's the next, yeah, you know? Yeah. And then after that, you know, it starts to chill out. Yeah. And then the next one's like, you're trying to pass 10 million gross. And yeah. that's when there's, there's these levels. Yeah. And the first million is always really hard to get to yeah. gross wise. And it, so, yeah, it's, it's a grind, but yeah. I feel very blessed. I feel that at least I own a company that I can help people. Yeah. I and got into it tremendous. because of that. Yeah. You know, all, we're all about quality and purity and potency. Yeah. And we've elaborated on those three standards of excellence into seven standards of excellence. And that's our, you know, that's our motto is, is really um, because you deserve it. Mm -hmm. I, I knew about your company before I met you. Oh, how weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The reason I knew about your company before I met you is because when I would, I would go buy at my vitamins, at like there's, there's this place in a way they're called Honey Bees, Natural, whatever. And I would, one of the first times I went in there, I asked for, I think I was looking for uh, Reservatrol. And I asked, hey, so can you guys recommend? And so they started telling me. And so I'm like, oh, okay, this company. Blah, blah. And I remember your company because of the bottle. And in Paradise, I thought, what a cool name. And they told me, yeah, this company is great because they're so clean. Mm -hmm. They're clean in what and in, in their ingredients. They're clean in the way they do everything. So, and that was one of the recommendations by the worker there. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> that's a cool <laughs> that story. Me, yeah, that this company is really clean. And that's what uh, I was like, oh, cool name, clean company. So, um, yeah, I knew about your company before that's I even awesome. met you. And then when I met you, I thought. I wonder if it's the same dude. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. And then when whenever they showed me the bottle, I was like, oh. oh, dude, she'll never let me live it down when I got a little butt hurt about the brothers giving me a hard time looking GQ or something. You know? <laughs> She's, I'm like, dude, I don't know him, you know? But it, it all worked out well years, years later. No, we're, we are. I mean, the, the, we were one of the first companies to start uh, filler free, yeah. flow agent free ingredients. Oh, so wow. that's crucial, right? Because there's these different quote other ingredients that many, many companies yeah, add yeah. that can yeah. impede the digestibility of the ingredient. Yeah. Or if you're using certain things like magnesium stearate, um, that's a flow agent. It's a hydrogenated oil. It's a dried hydrogenated oil that can actually encoat an ingredient and make it less utilized by the body or oh, yes, wow. digestible. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we are really big into that. And uh, as you see, a lot of our, our ingredients um, will have like a 250 milligram, but it's 50 to one concentrate or 100 yeah, to yeah, one concentrate. Yeah. So you see these little capsules, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, but we're all about that. You know, we're trying to deliver the highest quality products, obviously at a at a value. Yeah. You know, everything these days is price predicated. So yeah. we're really trying to deliver this super high end 
product and and at times we can't compete with the lesser quality products yeah because uh, yeah because it takes more money more resources to get a higher quality ingredient well you know what people don't understand that milligram doesn't make up potency yeah so you can have a ground up i don't know what did you mention resveratrol yeah yeah um There's a let's root. use something else like saint john's wort everybody probably was f yeah is yeah. familiar with saint john's wort you can have a ground up St. John's wort and you can have a concentrated extract and they both are 500 milligrams, but the concentrated extracts 10 times stronger than the ground up herb. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And um, it's funny because having these conversations with you, um, I always, I always leave like, Oh, and then I go and do my research reader and like, man, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm so grateful for all the stuff that you taught me. And like now your, your stuff is all I ever, I ever use, ever buy. And I know I get most of it from you, but I do try to buy some of it in the stores and, and online. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, I'm grateful for that. So thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right, so let's see. This one is an important question for all men because I think all men, we struggle with this. And so in your experience, how does mental health correlate with entrepreneurial success and what strategies do you employ to maintain mental well-being? Great question. Yeah, mental health is huge because it's it's the driving force behind how our physical bodies react, mm -hmm. right? I, I This is something that I've been researching for about five or six years now. Um, again, speaking only for myself, I, I was one of those kids, not only did I have allergies, but it, it te I tended to have, like, I'll just share it. I'll just, I tended to have anxiety growing mm -hmm. up. And so I started doing a lot more uh, research. I went to the AMN clinic, got my brain scan, did that whole thing. And sure enough, I was, I was uh, diagnosed with, like, an anxiety disorder. Mm -hmm. And I was like, great, now I'm just another label, right? Yeah. Which I hate. Yeah. You know, that's just something that really bothers me. And so as I started doing more and more research, um, I was sitting down uh, having lunch with my pastor and I go, you know what, man, I, 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 this thing called MTHFR stands for methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase. It's a gene mutation. Mm -hmm. And there's certain people that have this gene mutation that doesn't allow their bodies to methylate to make the neurotransmitters that we need. Yeah, I don't know what methylate means. So what, what is Yeah, so... Basically, um, a methylation is a process that the body goes through in a conversion process to where um, it it needs that methylation process to detoxify. Oh, um, okay, so like right? cleaning process. Yeah, yeah, but it's not just that. It's it it it's, it it goes way deeper. So yeah. MTHFR is is a gene mutation, and you can have either a single mutation or a double. I have the single. And so when I found that out, I felt like it was the like, oh my gosh, the light bulb went on for me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And what was, what was really happening is my body wasn't converting folic acid, which is B9, into methyl folate, which is the coenzymatic form of, of B9, right? So if you have this gene mutation, you can have more, you can be way more susceptible to anxiety um, you can be more susceptible to depression, different different things, because the body is not uh, creating the neurotransmitters. So I always felt like in my mind, I was like, man, you know the whole word chemical imbalance? Mm -hmm. I was like, nah, man, I don't feel like I have a chemical imbalance. I was checked for it and didn't have any issues. I was just having a lot of anxiety. Yeah. Um, well, what happened for me is I wasn't getting methylfolate. And you have to have a pretty heavy dose of methylfolate. But methylfolate is, is the coenzymatic form of folic acid, which is B9. And that particular B vitamin is, is crucial in making serotonin. Mm -hmm. Crucial in making GABA, dopamine, norepinephrine, all those neurotransmitters. Oh, right? all the feel-good hormones. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, so how, I, do you, how do you, over, what do you do? Like, how did you deal with that? Oh, how yeah, you... yeah. I'm still dealing with it. But, but I'm dealing with it in a, in a way that I, I feel like I'm making really good progress mm -hmm. and uh some of it is again my brand doesn't have a cbd but um some of it is natural cbd in the endocannabinoid system yeah, you know yeah, that's yeah. very similar and it, and it relates to the neuro and works synergistically with the neurotransmitters especially mm -hmm. serotonin um a large dose of methylfolate you know okay. b12 b6 but yeah. they're all have to be in the coenzymatic form so you know i noticed that you had the multivitamin yeah, not the plug paradise more. but 
the B vitamins in our in our product are the methylated forms. They're the coenzymatic forms. Mm. So if you figure forty percent of the population is walking around with you know an MTHFR gene mutation, that might be, and I'm not saying it is because I'm not a doctor and I'm not sitting here saying, but that could be why we're dealing with so much mental health. Yeah, okay? yeah, absolutely. Our 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 products that we consume now. I noticed are so, so filled with chemicals, man. They're so filled with chemicals. It was weird because I was reading how um, a company is just getting sued for a product that causes, or they put something in their product that causes hair thinning. Oh, boy. Yeah. I was like, we don't need more of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I definitely don't. <laughs> so it's, yeah. Our, our, and I, under, okay, I understand on the business side how they do this to be profitable. But... Um, I understand. I get that part, but at the same time, I'm like, man, it's like we're at some point our body has to. It's gonna rebel against all this chemicals that we're putting in us. It's gonna not function properly, and I think it's showing in our society because we're anxiety ridden. There's more anxiety now than ever before. There's more depression now than ever before. Um, there's all these issues that are coming up, and people say, oh, it's because we're getting better at testing it. No, it's. I think it's coming. I think it's coming up because of the foods that we consume, the the products that we take in. The, like you said, like and, and I know this from talking to you earlier. You think you're taking something, but it's not. You're not absorbing it. You're just it's just cycling through and coming out. Yeah, yeah, and I think that has to do with a lot of the processed foods. You know, mm -hmm. um, you know, our guts. I always say this. We have a product called Oric Energy Greens. It's mm -hmm. it's a yeah, patented greens yeah, product, yeah. and each scoop is equal to way over 24 ser servings of fruits and vegetables in, in, mm -hmm. in as far as what we call antioxidant capacity mm -hmm. or the antioxidant equivalent of, mm -hmm. of a fruit and vegetable. So yeah. each six gram scoop is equivalent to over 24 servings mm -hmm. of fruits and vegetables in antioxidant, the, the antioxidant power of, right? That's what we call it. Yeah. Um, but I, I developed that early on because most of us don't get nine servings of fruits and vegetables a day. <laughs> Barely get six. Yeah, prior, prior to eating your, your Oric Energy Greens, I probably had an apple every two weeks. Yeah, you know? see, see. Yeah. So we're always, and, and a part of that is our lifestyle. We're super yeah. busy. We're running around all the time. Yeah. And. Because everybody's got two, three jobs. Everybody's got a side hustle. Uh, yeah. You know, it's. Yeah, and you're talking about the foods and 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 so I always tell people this, you know, uh, if you can't if you can't pronounce it, you probably don't want to put it in your body, yeah, you know. Yeah. But there 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 are like okay, here here's the thing, and I don't want to bash energy drinks or anything like that. But if you're if you're gonna do energy drinks, do something clean. Yeah, you know, yeah. try to do something clean or limit yourself. You don't yeah. don't do too many. Yeah. Um, and, and and again, you have to remember that okay, this is kind of like a kickstart, whether it's a cup of coffee or or an energy drink or whatever. But then you also have to remember to wind down, right? You don't want your oh, brain super active, yeah, 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 when you're trying to fall asleep, or you won't fall asleep. So that's so. What do you do? What do you do to wind down? So you know, I think prayer and meditation yeah, is awesome. Yeah, I meditate a lot. I, too. I think that uh, you know, calming music is really good. Mm -hmm. I mean, the worst thing. And we're all guilty of it. The worst thing to do is let me watch a movie on my phone yeah, or yeah. bet a smash up movie or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I I do like to take natural things for sleep. I love, uh, you know, ashwagandha, bacopa, uh, lemon balm, passion flower. I, yeah. I play around with a lot of different things. Being the formulator, I'm always. I should probably listen to my own advice, but yeah. I'm always in research and development mode. So I'm always trying out different products. Uh, lately, it's been a CBD product that I like mixed with some different herbs. Yeah, yeah. You gave me the ashwagandha, and I noticed before I used to, I, my mind would race. I'd be in bed, and my mind would just be going off. Okay, I got to do this. I got to do that. Make sure you do this. Make sure you get done. It'd just be racing, racing. And I would, I would look at the clock, and finally, like 40 minutes later, I, I would, I would, that's the last time I would remember looking at it. And now with the ashwagandha that you gave me, like. Within 15, 20 minutes, I'm my mind's I can feel it relaxing. I meditate a little bit. And yeah, okay. I think I think the neurotransmitter that we don't talk enough about is it's called GABA. Mm -hmm. And GABA is pronounced gamma amino um, butyric acid. And it's a it's a it's our it's our Holt amino acid. It's our Holt neurotransmitter. So part of the fight or flight, right? But GABA is what we call the um, it slows your 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 brain down from 
overthinking, I guess, is yeah, the yeah, best yeah. way to explain it from a yeah, yeah. you know yeah, basic me, perspective. Yeah, yeah. And so there's things like sun theanine that increases alpha wave production, but also helps with uh, GABA production. There's a product, I don't carry it in my brand, but I really like it. It's called Pharma GABA. It's a naturally fermented GABA from a um, uh, from basically a lactobacillus acidophilus, right? So the lactobacillus is how it's being fermented. And I like that because it's not chemically made. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think certain foods too, you know, believe it or not, you know, the, the you know, us men, we tend to run hot. So, yeah. you know, you can do a juice, uh, a greens juice, celery, you know, celery is really good. Juice celery, or you can buy organic celery juice. Um, there's so many herbs out there and there's so many different things. I always go back to that. You know, my yeah. son, my son's actually trying to get me to, oh, come on, dad, let's go to the gym. I go, dude, I ain't going to the gym until I get in shape. You got to work out to get to the gym. You know, yeah, and we yeah. a, lot, a lot of us feel that way. Yeah. A lot of us feel like, dude, I got to go to the gym, and all these other guys, they look great. Yeah. And I'm dealing with the dad bod, and yeah. I'm trying to figure out how to not have the dad bod, yeah. right? It's hard though, bro. Oh, it's, it's hard. super hard, especially after <laughs> yeah. e after yesterday, right? Yeah. We had some good we dessert. Ate, yeah, I ate like crazy <laughs> yesterday. Yeah, so, Man, that prime rib was phenomenal. So, yeah. Yeah. I bought myself a bike though, and okay. I'm I'm biking. I did six miles the other day, and couple miles yet the day before and i'm yeah, starting yeah. to feel i'm getting that cardio back with yeah. covid you know i was like i hate to admit it but dude i i wasn't motivated in the beginning i was yeah, yeah. you know we would go around we were shooting video you know about you know i was in mothers and um everybody's freaking out <laughs> it was crazy <laughs> yeah. man it was like the end of the world um but yeah so there's 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 been that post covid like everybody's trying to get back yeah, to yeah back into the routines yeah and that's kind of where i'm at you know earlier you said that men run hot yeah i noticed that like like my daughters and, and my family members like when i shake their hands they're cold mm -hmm. and they're always complaining how my feet are cold my feet are cold uh, why is that why why is why do men run why do i feel like my hands are always warm where my female counterparts their their extremities are cold yeah that's a good question i mean Technically, the simplest answer is that we're the yang and they're the yin. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And yin's cooling, and 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 the yang is fire. Yeah. But you you can go even deeper. A lot of times, um, women. It's it, I wouldn't say it's just women. It's just in general circulation. Yeah, yeah. Um, believe it or not, if you if you look into the anatomy, um, if you look at uh, women's blood vessels and 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 the arteries and stuff they're smaller than ours so that, yeah, that, that makes be sense because they're smaller frame mm -hmm. than us yeah but mostly it's mostly women are more um deficient in yang so mm -hmm. so there's warming herbs that they should be taking and that will help them with motivation that'll help mm -hmm. their sex drive that'll help a lot of things and those herbs are uh, ashwagandha is a good one but there's more uh, there's different herbs like epimedium in Chinese medicine. Uh, I love rhodiola, jiaogilong. These are these are different herbs that uh, I think we should all be taking. You yeah. know, just just because they're adaptogens and they help us adapt and cope with the stress, environmental stress, physical stress, mental yeah, stress, yeah, yeah. emotional. Believe it or not, they're all there, yeah. and we're all facing that. You know, I wanted to I wanted to bring this up. Um, why do you think? I think you'd ask me, oh, man, well, how do you deal with the mental side of it, right? Yeah, it's stressful. I, I, I think that because we're inundated with so much, right? Oh, my gosh, did you hear about the tidal wave in, you know, so-and-so? Yeah, yeah. or, or the Baltimore Bridge. Just yeah, yeah, you're being inundated with all kinds of information all at once. Rather, back in the day with our parents, they weren't inundated. They, they learned maybe there was one tra tragedy or something going on during that. It's yeah, your one weak. big thing. Yeah. Now it's like you get five to ten all at once, and yeah. your brain cannot cope with it. It's overload. I'm a very empathic person, so I have to be really careful. Uh, it's very hard for me to hear and see people going through things and yeah. how heavy it is for people, and um, I feel a lot for them. And it's probably why I chose to start my own company and and manufacture products versus going to acupuncture school and being a doctor because it was very difficult growing up. I was growing up working at mothers, you know, during that time, um, HIV and AIDS was huge yeah, yeah. and they didn't have a cure. And we were getting a lot of different people coming in, just looking for alternatives. It was, yeah. it was crazy. And, uh, and that was a scary time. That was a scary time. And so I think that, 
I think that limiting nature, dude, get out in nature, yeah. go work outside, go walk on the beach, get up early. And if you can get down to the ocean and walk on the sand, you know, yeah. go Even for a grass, bike, right? Yeah. yeah grass just, grounding, right? Yeah, grounding. Yeah. I think it's huge. Um, try not to, you know, everybody sleeps with their cell phone next to their yeah. head. That's not good. Right. Yeah. Those are, you know, putting out EMFs and stuff. So yeah. I, I think that it's just really finding a balance. Finding your happy place, right? Finding a balance. Yeah, I think we have to make an effort for that. A lot of times we think we just kind of get pulled by the draw of life, by the by the busyness of life, <clears throat> and we just kind of. I don't. Remember, I know for me, I used to feel like I'm just along for the ride. I have no real control, and so we have to make an active effort to take control of our thoughts, of our day to day actions, of our of our like. I noticed with, with all the stuff that you've recommended and that I'm taking out, like, I don't want to say, like, I'm healed from some great thing, but I feel like my quality of life, like, my stress has been under control, my sleep is better. My quality of life has been dramatically, dramatically, like, in, improved. So <clears throat> I think we do need to make more of an effort to get the right stuff in us the right foods, the, the the right amount of sun, the right amount of exercise, the right amount of grinding, we have to make active efforts, active actions to get a higher quality of life. I don't think we're ever going to get rid of the struggle. The struggle is, is everyone struggles. Everyone, life isn't supposed to be easy. So we all have our struggles. But I think we can have a better life. We, we can have, and it starts with the stuff that we take in, foods, supplements, um, but we can have a better life. I really, I really believe that because of what's happened to me. Yeah, I think, I, I, I think too. Like you said something. Uh, I believe in this is why I'm here, because the more people that, oh my gosh, he has sleep apnea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, dude, what? He struggled. Mm -hmm. MTHFR. What? Yeah. Right. Yeah. The more that we realize that we're not isolated that we're not alone in our anxiety or we're not alone in our, you know, our, our melancholy mm -hmm. or our stress or whatever we've gone through in life. And then we realize that there's other people that have gone through this. Yeah. It, it helps tremendously to realize that, you know, it's very hard to get that out of men. Yeah. You know, we, we feel like we have to be the, the, the foundation, the pillar, the right? rock, the yeah. rock, yeah. the rock of Gibraltar, right? Yeah. Well, not yeah. anymore, <laughs> but yeah, I still feel like I'm, yeah, yeah, but 85. <laughs> that's the thing, bro. I mean, I'm going to be 55 this year coming up, and, and it's like I'm learning to let go more. I always wanted to be in control, and I realized I actually can't. I could be in control of certain things, but there's just certain things I can't be in control of. Yeah. And I think the more I, I, I learn that, the more I learn to let go. And, you know, some people say let go and let God, right? Yeah. The more I learn that, the more I realize, like, okay, Take a deep breath. Yeah. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. I did my part. I stayed in my lane. I did everything I could. Now it's, you know, it's up yeah. to God. Yeah. I, I, it's out of my hands, right? Yeah. And that's been helping me a lot. That's been helping me a lot because, you know, there's times, I don't know about you, but there's times to where, like today was one of them. I was like, woke up just feeling a little bit stressed out. Yeah. You know, it's Monday and, you know, everybody's talking about this lunar eclipse and april 8th and yeah, you know i can't yeah. help but be a little bit <laughs> yeah. like holy cow what's going on you know yeah everything on social media sounds so catastrophic like i'm waiting for april 8th and the world's gonna end you know the way they make the way they make it sound know. online i'm like geez man what's really gonna happen i don't know man i just wish that people would like st would stop messing with everything yeah. you know just let it be what it is you know mm. rather than i don't know it's that's a whole nother that's probably a whole nother podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <so. laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's funny. <laughs> well, um, we try not to keep this too long because I want people to, to uh, pay attention. And yeah, I know yeah. our attention span right now is really short because of social media. So we, we try to keep them. Not, I know there's, there's benefits to the long format versus short format, but I think the short format is a little bit beneficial when you're trying to give advice because they can take it in really quickly. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I would like to say if it's okay with you. Yeah. Just just from my here, a man's perspective, <laughs> my perspective. Yeah. Uh, 
a couple of things that we could be doing. Okay. Right? A couple of things. Not to plug Paradise, but, you know, it, it, you go out and find your own supplement that you like, whatever. Uh, a good multivitamin yes. with methylated B vitamins. Okay. Yeah, so that tremendous. is the Earth Blend. It's really a great one a day. Mm -hmm. uh, an adaptogen, you know. Take What's something. an adaptogen? So an adaptogen is something that helps your body adapt, mental, physical, or emotional, or or. Um, so how would we find it? What would what would it say on the bottle? What? It'll it'll say adaptogens. Ashwagandha is an adaptogen. Oh, okay, it helps okay. your body cope with stress, basically. Mm -hmm. So a good adaptogen. Uh, we have an adaptogenic formula called oh, okay. Imperial Adaptogen. I think that's fantastic. And then you know a, a good level of zinc or or you know some some men's products mm -hmm. to just keep our testosterone our freak testosterone up and you could do that the more that you engage with other men believe it or not you go work out they've done studies that yeah. iron sharpens iron and your, yeah. your teeth just coming up just by doing that yeah mm -hmm. so i think um that's important you know that that brotherhood right yeah. but just a couple of basics to keep your your health going and then and then find something like um you know, we have a sleep product, uh, but I think melatonin, you know, mm -hmm. one to three milligrams is fine. There's other natural like lemon balm or passion flower taking some of that at night for me anyways. Again, I can't, I'm not here to give advice to anybody else as much as just share my story. Yeah. Those work really well. Yeah. Right now you said a uh, brotherhood that has been the, one of the biggest catapults for a better quality of life in, in finding brothers that I can count on and that aren't that are I can be vulnerable to and I can tell things that I'm afraid to say in public and um not be judged for it and still yeah, be loved. Absolutely. Like I know I've told you things that I would never tell anybody. Yeah. And you didn't come in and tell me, Oh, you're weak, you're this or that. We just discussed it and yeah. you know, that finding someone to talk to, finding that that's that community to be a part of is tremendous. Is I cannot stress enough, and I'm speaking out of personal experience. I don't. I know there's studies out there that can, will that would probably show this too. But I, you, you can, cannot stress enough how important community is, how important that brotherhood is to be with like-minded individuals who truly love you. And guys, you know we're a little bit tough, and it's just some of my friends. Like, like I, I, I will be vulnerable with them. We'll sit and we'll we'll talk about it and we'll get through it. And then afterwards, they'll kind of jab me about it. But you know, men, you know. But it's all in, in love. It's all in to try to promote strength, to try to promote growth. So, yeah, you, you mentioned the brotherhood thing, and that is that is super, super important. That's like, I cannot stress how important that brotherhood is. So, yeah, and I know I have that with you. Yeah, and yeah. vice versa. I appreciate that for sure. And I appreciate you having me on. You oh, know? Thank you. Thank you, it's been, brother. It's been thank a you. blessing, man. So one, one last thing I try to ask people is, if you could go back and talk to your 21-year-old self, what would you say? What would you tell your 21-year-old self? Hey, dude, stop doing this or do this. What, what would you tell yourself? Don't worry so much. Oh. It's all going to work out. Yeah. Don't worry so much. Don't stress out about it because, like I said before, you can only, you can only have so much control of it. And after that, it's out of your hands. Yeah. And 99%, um, I remember, you remember Greg Laurie? Yeah. yeah. He once said 99% of the things we worry about don't ever happen. Yeah. yeah. Right. So that is really kind of like what we do. Yeah. Okay. A lot of, there's a lot of people I've interacted with over, over the years that yeah. I've been in this industry, a lot of doctors, a lot of specialists. And, um, a lot of people would never realize like we do anxiety. Mm -hmm. We do it. It's not just happening to us. Yeah. So if we can train our ourselves to not do it, or recognize we're doing it yeah. and go, oh, crud, man, I'm doing anxiety really yeah, well yeah. right now. Um, and it's hard. It's hard. We worry. The number one thing I think we worry most about is is financial and money. Mm -hmm. And Because it has, such a, a, it has such a huge impact on our quality of life. It, it does. Yeah. And, and the one thing that I would go back and just say, don't worry so much because it's all going to work out. Yeah. It's all going to be okay. No I, matter what, it's all going to be okay. And, and that's, if I can have that mentality... 20, 30 years ago, I don't think that I would, don't get me wrong, like having money's fine. You know, as you know, I like, I'm a big SUV buff and <laughs> I, I like cars, yeah, 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 you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but looking back, a car is just a car, yeah. you know. Most important thing for me is 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 God and family. Yeah. 
and relationships. And looking back, my wife didn't want the big house. She didn't care. I was the guy, oh, I got to have the big house, or I got to have this mm. or that. Or, oh, your or, house is amazing, dude. <laughs> well, it's okay, but yeah, it's no, like, you know. amazing. I know we, you're humble, we, and I appreciate that. Was, that was, dude, that house in itself was a, uh, uh, a bank repo. Yeah, yeah I don't remember. We only got that. into it because of that, right? Yeah, they you say, guys put a lot of money you know, into it. Yeah. 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 Go but, buy the smallest house in the nicest neighborhood yeah. or whatever, you know, <laughs> you learn in real estate. But looking back, yeah, man, don't worry so much about everything because it's all going to work out. That's that's like the best advice I would be able to give myself. And and just enjoy life. Just go enjoy it because it's fast. It goes yes. fast. It goes yeah. fast. Just spend time with your family. You know, you get that day off and I know you're burned out. Take them to the beach. Yep. Go for a bike ride with your kids, yeah. whatever. They're going to appreciate that more than more than any monetary thing ever. Yeah. And I've learned that. And it's only been recently that I've learned that my kids value time more yeah. than any gift ever. Yeah. And so, yeah, I, I, I would go back and say, you know what, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go, hey, you don't want to go, uh, maybe not skydiving, but zip lining yeah, yeah. you know at 50 <laughs> whatever go do it man yeah, yeah, you start yeah. getting a little haired out about heights or whatever you know yeah. don't go put your life in danger or anything crazy but just go enjoy life and and uh and realize like i said don't worry so much yeah good i like that don't worry so much part because at work they um i've taken we've taken they give us classes regarding mental health and i remember we had this one um it's like i don't remember if it was a psychologist or psychiatrist but he said most most people's problems will resolve themselves in six weeks mm. and so whenever i come into contact with people and i i always try to tell them that i tell them hey you know I, some i once was told that just wait six weeks and then most of our issues will resolve themselves in six weeks wow and and so far it's been true like i'll talk to people you know a few weeks later hey how you guys how you guys doing with that situation Oh man, it's like it's it's worked itself out. I'm like, oh okay, cool. See, so yeah, it, yeah. So you got through it. Yeah, yeah. Right. So that's a that's a that's a piece of advice that I know that really works. It's that's true. I should say it. it's really true. Yeah. For real. How how would we how would we find your company or your products? Where can we where can we get them at? Oh yeah, so uh, paradiseherbs.com dot mm -hmm. or on Amazon. In, in, all over the internet okay uh we're in sprouts we're in mothers we're in clark's we're in organic roots we're pretty much in a lot of the health food stores okay as well as online okay. so uh you can go to paradiseherbs.com and that's our website and that'll direct you okay. and it'll tell you a lot more about all the products and everything too okay as well. fantastic so remember paradiseherbs.com because uh, i like i said i i this is all i use now this is all that i use now um so thank you so much for being here, Scott. Yeah, my yeah, pleasure. Thank you, you for having me. Yeah, yeah I thank appreciate you, thank it. You, thank you. Awesome. And thank you guys for uh, watching. Like usual, if you have any questions or uh, concerns, put them in the comments, and either I or my guest will, will try to address them. Like and subscribe, and I look forward to talking to you guys again later.